Have you ever wanted to be the first to know if aliens really exist? Well, with Nebula, you can be! Nebula is the streaming service that's home to its Probably Not Aliens, as well as our YouTube channels. And the best part? All of our content goes up early on Nebula. So when we break first contact with E.T., you'll be the first to find out. That's right, you'll be able to listen to the next episode of this show before anyone else. Plus, we post bonus content that you won't find any other place. And the best part? By signing up for Nebula at nebula.tv slash probably not aliens, you're directly supporting the show and both of us. So don't wait any longer. Join Nebula today and be the first to know if this time it really is aliens. This is episode 117. We're gonna finish the fight. Is this the episode we finish the fight? Yeah, this is the one where we finally defeat uh, ancient aliens. Once we're gonna and for defeat all. them. What we're gonna defeat not the TV show. We're we're fighting and defeating real life ancient aliens. Isn't that what Halo is about? I don't think it's literally about the concept of the TV show Ancient Aliens, but the aliens he's fighting are pretty old, I think, right? I have never played a Halo, but I'm pretty sure. As as far as I know, it's like you're fighting a group of aliens that are religious and that they live in giant doomsday things. Yeah. They've got a lot of Bible references. There's the Covenant, the Ark. Obviously, it's called Halo. That's angels and stuff like that. The Flood is an enemy that's like Noah and whatnot. A lot of very biblical Halo is. Yeah, people told me that I would like the Flood. They're my my vibe of sci-fi alien. A hundred percent. You know anything <laughs> about them? That there's a lot of them and that they are like brain control people and they're like little green goobies. They're like, yeah, they're like little zombie alien, like little spores or something like that that turn people into zombies. It's the coolest scariest cutscene from the first Halo is when you see all these people who come across the flood and you're like, what the fuck are the flood? And then and then all of a sudden you're in a zombie game with yeah. a shotgun and they give you the shotgun and it's great. It feels good. Yeah, I think um, it's also the reason why people said I would like Dead Space. Oh, yeah. So that that would be my vibe. I have a very specific vibe and when people know what it is, then they can immediately say, Tristan, you're going to like this one. This one is for you. Yeah. This scary Space is Tristan. If you guys all want to know, here is the things that I put in the constellation of Tristan's sci-fi thing, aliens that he likes. Please give me more of it. Uh-huh. The first one, most obvious, Xenomorphs. Xenomorphs. Scary space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I really like uh, the Tyranids from Warhammer 40k. Okay. I don't know. What, uh, does that qualify as scary space? They are extra galactic. So they're like from outside the Milky Way galaxy. Okay. Aliens that don't have any technology that have a sort of collective consciousness. And they're in they're They've had multiple giant hive ships approach from several angles, which implies that they have devoured most of the universe except for the Milky Way at this point. Oh, okay. Scary space. Their whole thing is that they basically devour the biomass of entire planets and turn them into dead husks and then move on so yeah so scary space scary space I'm, yeah is, that, is what i'm getting they can yeah, control yeah. their evolution uh, the other one is the zerg because the zerg started life as tyranids for a licensed warhammer 40k game that then had to be rebranded really fast from starcraft that's the scariest thing of all rebranding co- a- accidental copyright. Potential copyright infringement yeah then there was beyond the aquila rift and the swarm which are two short stories that i really like oh and also the phyrexians from magic the gathering gotcha and maybe the borg i don't know if the borg fit in that but you like scary spaces i, I like scary like space i love sci-fi horror is by far my favorite genre of mm. story and when a good sci-fi horror thing comes out i get very excited uh that's why yeah. i like love death and robots was like one of my favorite things in like recent days well that's good i'm glad that we're talking about this because it has absolutely nothing to do with today's episode no but also this today's episodes uh is is all oops all bummers oops all bummers i actually i have a surprise for you oh and that is that i did find what could be the tristan makes you sad music oh boy and if this whole episode is the part where tristan makes you sad i can play it but it looks like there is a part at the end where tristan makes you sad it's it's a, it's a difference without a distinction or a distinction without a difference to be honest so we can get, right. get start on it we'll we'll play we'll play it 
it, but we'll play it later. All right. Stick around for that, everyone. Hype. Build hype. Build hype. We're going to play it later and you're going to be here to hear it. Why? Because this is a podcast. Mm -hmm. This is a podcast called It's Probably Not Aliens, where we look into ancient astronaut theory, the TV show Ancient Aliens, and we look at their claims, debunk them usually, and teach you a lot about the real world history and science sometimes of real people, places, things, concepts, time periods, conspiracies, all this stuff. It's fun. It's a fun time. You're going to have fun. That's an order from Spartan 117. Yeah, we live, laugh, love. Spartan 117 says, is live, laugh, and love to finish the fight. And that's what we're doing. We're finishing the fight today because this is a part two, kind of, from last week's episode where we talked about, is the Aryan race aliens? That's what we talked about last week. Is the Aryan race aliens? My name is Scott Nicewander. I know nothing. I, I apparently know a little bit more about Halo than Tristan does, which is very surprising to me considering I'm not a gamer, but I believe the plot of Halo is there's a red team and a blue team and then they fight. I'm Tristan Johnson who who knows who knows many things, but not that because I never got an Xbox. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Today we are having a little chat about esoteric Nazis. This is like this is a this is a continuation from our last episode. Like literally, like yes. this is the notes from last episode because I've been just going down too many rabbit holes in the last little bit when we're dealing about it. Because yes, mostly I would say that the reason is because we're getting into a like this is the episode we're we're going through an episode of Ancient Aliens, which is talking about Nazis and aliens in the Third Reich, and it's a very good position to talk talk about how there is a very distinct lineage between the ideas of the Third Reich and basically like a lot of the ideological and um, and the underpinnings of many movements that are associated with the t- subject of the show. Like there's a lot of connective tissue between the Nazi regime and the UFO culture and the New Age culture that is that has taken inspiration from UFO stuff but also like ancient aliens ancient astronaut theory there's a lot of there's a lot of connection here that i think is important to tread because i think that more and more these days maybe it's also just because of the video i'm working on we're we're struggling to fully acknowledge that like as conspiracy theories become more of a mainstream thing we don't we have to realize that they all kind of have their roots in fascist ideology right yeah so what if you could if you could condense this episode into like a tagline what are people going to learn from listening to this episode yeah today we're talking about specifically esoteric nazis uh the sort of what happened after the war and how nazis started uh-huh. to get weird because we talked okay. about a very weird nazi in our last episode and yes. now we are sort of picking up where we left off and talking about how how do you get to somebody who thinks that hitler is the avatar of the god Vishnu, you know? Right. So what I find interesting about this series that we've been doing, because it's a couple episodes now that we've been talking about Nazis and ancient aliens. What I find interesting is that this all comes from one episode of ancient aliens so far, right? And there's just so much to touch on because I feel like we've been, we haven't really hit on the TV show ancient aliens in a while. Like we haven't really focused in on them, but this is where all this stuff comes from. And it is frustrating that they put so much stuff Stuff that we have to spend hours and hours and hours of episodes debunking and teaching the real history of into like one 42 minute episode that they just cram everything into mm-hmm. and just like don't think about this let's move on to the next thing so shout out to you Tristan for really combing through their one episode and turning this basically into a whole series of, about ancient aliens and Nazis uh, and trying to teach about real world history and conspiracies and yeah all sorts of weird stuff I would say it's been fun but that feels like the wrong word to uh to say there's there's a dark humor to it there's a little bit of fun in just the fact that we get to hang out and make content together and yeah, joke about stuff so fun. that's always that's always part of it but yeah it is tough subject matter and also comes very close to like my work because i am a like i, I studied terrorism mm-hmm. i've done a lot of research on the american far right that's sort of my my beat in a way so mm-hmm. and i just happen to be talking about it in my next youtube video that is coming out in the same time like i've been working on it at the same time as we've been recording these episodes right. so it's like on my mind a lot 
not. Yeah, I get you. All right, let's dive into it. Esoteric Nazis. What does that even mean? Good question. It's tougher to answer than you'd think. So I guess we should probably, like, let's start with this idea, the idea that Nazis had an association with the occult. We've talked about this a few times in the show, but there's this idea that Nazi ideology had this connection with occultism that got highly sensationalized through popular culture. We've made the mm-hmm. Hellboy references. We've made the yep. Captain America first movie references. And yep. this is part of the, and we, I think this was basically like the thing we ended on uh, last episode about us trying to distance ourselves from how Nazis are not actually that unlike us and that human nature has a dark side that you can that people can be brought into doing terrible things that they think they're doing it for right. a greater, better that, purpose. The sort of through line of this whole series of us talking about Nazis and ancient aliens is that trying to link those two together, trying to make the Nazis seem weirder and more out there than they than they actually were as a way to like other them and to be like, well, those ways of thinking are not present today. But when in, in actuality, when you think about it and when you actually, you know, like look into it, it's like, no, what the, the mindset of the Nazis is not actually too far off from what a lot of terrible mindsets that people have currently. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it, that's sort of the through line that we've talked about. It's just a way of trying to make it be like, oh, but that would never happen again. The Nazis, because they were into some weird stuff and aliens and things. Exactly. Here, Here's the core. If you want to know at the core what Nazis believe, what was Nazi ideology at its very core concept was that this belief that all races were in a form of competition with each other, which Mm -hmm. was an extension of uh, various different beliefs that were going around at the time because there was this concept called social Darwinism that was big Mm -hmm. in sort of the late Victorian period that had this idea that different civilizations, different nations were all in competition with each other and and the ones that, you know, were the best at uh, adapting and the ones that were best at conquest and and those that were best that you know imperialism were the ones that rose to the top and were therefore the most fit and sort of you know twisting yeah. darwinian evolution one to make it fit a more competition focused idea because that was kind of the idea of evolution back then that it was all about fierce competition where while that's not in that's not entirely removed today there's a lot more talk about how cooperation is a much bigger part of evolution than we think given that like you know the most successful animals on our spe- on our planet are like ants <laughs> and if you really think yeah. about it uh multi Cellular life is like single cellular life that got really into cooperation with each other. Now, did you forget about seven episodes ago when we also talked about how ants are aliens? I think. Oh, is yeah, there we is that on. too. Yeah. 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 That undermines my point entirely, I guess. Uh, all those fossilized <laughs> ants and such. Okay. We'll just go with the naked mole rat, which is another, which is a mammal that acts like ants. Perfect. Uh, and they look ridiculous. I love them. They look like if a penis was an animal on its own and walked around. <laughs> Don't say that about Rufus. Don't tell me that about Rufus. Who's Rufus? The naked... Oh my God. Do you not know the most famous pop culture naked mole rat? No, I guess. From from Kim Possible? Oh yeah, I've definitely never seen Kim Possible. Rufus, the naked mole rat. Okay. I'll take your word anyway. On. Okay. Not important. Don't tell me. Don't ruin that show by saying he's a penis. He might be a penis. Everyone close your ears when he says that. Don't listen to Tristan. <laughs> Rufus is great. So this was like the the predominant ideology because one, it's what was be called a, a system a system affirming belief, which is that in the that period, uh, European powers were still largely uh, colonizing the entire world and had this major tension where they had to explain why they had all these ideas about the equality of man and the belief in democracy and institutions while also having colonies and slavery and all those kinds of things. Mm. The first attempt to marry those ideas together was the invention of capitalism as a concept because capitalism was basically made to justify mm. slavery. But that's a different conversation. That was oh, that's no. much more spicy. Hot take. But social Darwinism sort of developed as national identities started to become a bigger and more prominent thing in the late 19th century. You mm. see like in the late 19th century that's when Italy decided to start existing and and when Germany uh, unified, both those countries had never really unified as a single entity until uh, the late 19th century. And they were sort of new countries on the board. And these national identities were to nationalists, which, you know, uh, fascism is often described as like hyper nationalist. Mm-hmm. These were considered like these. These are all different species and in, in, in contestant with each other. And it's like a sort of ecosystem survival of the fittest, that kind of thing. And Nazism took that and then also mixed it with the sort of racial concepts at the time 
time where they believe mm-hmm. that there were there were different races, some were better and some were worse because these were all racist white people who were still trying to justify the horrible things they were doing to not white people around the world. Mm. And so they were trying to talk about like, you know, the hierarchy of races, who are better, who are worse, measuring skulls, all that stuff. It was all complete pseudoscience. And it's all just like, of course, absolute bullshit. And we talked about this before in in previous episodes, but it's like, yeah, it's like having a conclusion and then cherry picking ideas that justify that conclusion. Yes. Which is like the exact opposite of how like something like the scientific method would work. Exactly. You've got a hypothesis, but you're effectively, and I'm simplifying the scientific process here, the scientific method, but like you're effectively trying to disprove your hypothesis in a way to be like, this is what I think. Let me do everything in my power to see if it's true by like basically trying to make, you know, approaching it as objectively as as possible. That's the ideal for sure. Ideal, yes, ideal. Uh, yeah, I guess the third idea that also brings into Nazi ideology is the idea of eugenics, that humanity can be, uh, through selective breeding, through uh, removing undesirable people from the population, you can improve the species. You can kind of improve the stock of the species in the way that you would in like an evolutionary sense, right? Mm-hmm. The Nazis took these three concepts and took them to their logical conclusion. Uh, they had this concept of races are all in contention with each other, uh, and believed that uh, specifically Jews were like undermining, like they were like a race that tried to undermine all the others and that's why they... Mm -hmm. And then they had this concept of eugenics that was like, we need to make our society better specifically by eliminating these people from society. And that's why like the first things that they did was go for people that they thought were in a eugenic sense, who they thought were disruptive to order. Like the first people they went after were like trans people. Mm -hmm. And then you know they went after people with disabilities. And a lot of times people didn't complain about that because eugenics was a popular idea at the time it's sort of why almost every like popular political figure from like the progressive movement in like the 1920s you always have to be like so what did they think about eugenics it's always like the part you have to be like mm, right because yeah, yeah. mm. a lot of people who consider themselves like progressives got into it because it was like this whole movement about the progressive movement was like this whole idea about like we can you know we actually can make society better which was like it doesn't just have to be managed we can actually improve society somewhat and that was like right. a novel idea that led to like you know votes for women and like early like you know worker protection stuff but also led to like concepts like eugenics uh yeah uh but like the nazi ideology really was a lot of ideas that were pretty popular at the time taken to their logical extreme in the form of uh of genocide and a ruthless war to basically like the 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 war was essentially over this idea that germany wanted to conquer ukraine in order to kill or enslave all of the people in it and then use its very bountiful farmland to uh grow more germans because they Mm. believed that they were the most powerful race so that they needed to have more space to live and grow Mm. if that sounds fucked up it's because yes this is the most fucked up ideology you can possibly imagine yeah truly terrible yeah that's but like that is but like you can see it as like almost a logical extension of a lot of prevailing ideologies of the early 20th century and a lot of prevailing ideologies that still continue in a form to this day Mm -hmm. so that's fun that's a fun thing uh yeah because the nazis basically believe that they were doing what was called applied biology yeah which is a horrifying thing to say now when it comes to the occult there were some nazi leaders like heinrich himmler who did have some interest in the occult and through this sort of like racial idea were trying to build a new Germanic identity in order to basically justify this idea that they were this like superior race of people that had a tangible legacy because as I kind of mentioned German identity was sort of newish because uh, mm-hmm. like Germany before like 1871 was like um, a bunch of different countries they needed to like b- bind together into one idea yeah and so that like kind of was part of that project but again it was a small thing and there's other like you know random claims like Hitler was possessed by a demon, which feels like, or that the Nazis had the spear of destiny and like those things like, right. like Hitler being possessed by a demon literally feels like them trying to otherize or like dehumanize. Right. It's, it's, it's going back to that same thing of just like, this was a very special circumstance and it's not something that would ever happen again. The ideas we're normalizing now and the things we're setting in motion are not similar in any way. So don't worry nope. about it because don't worry about it. Yeah. 
Then, like, in the name of doing some of this research, though, they did do a lot of really weird pseudo-archaeology and, and, and stuff. And one of the ones that always, like, latches on to the esoteric Nazi people is this 1938 expedition to Tibet. Mm-hmm. It was, like, this Nazi expedition to Tibet that was led by okay. a guy named Erch Schaefer that was trying right. to do some scientific research that was, again, inspired by Nazi ideology and trying to find the origins of the Aryan people and that kind of thing. Mm. Uh, mostly because Himmler had a fascination with Asian mysticism and... Uh, wanted to again find the origin of the Aryan race uh they got Mm. a bunch of money from public and uh, private sources including personal connections of Heinrich Himmler and had various people from like you know mammoth mammalogy ornithology entomology ethnology geophysics you Mm -hmm. know just like a bunch of different types of scientists they did a, a lot of their methods were basically heavily inspired by Nazi racial ideology. And so their data was basically useless. Mm. And even though, even though they were highly motivated to find things that confirm Nazi ideology, they actually didn't find anything that was concrete evidence supporting their theories about race. Oh, weird. Yeah. And the other thing too, is that a lot of the places they went to like Tibet and stuff like that were part of the British Imperial uh, realm, which, you know, speaks to the conversation we're having now, but it led to them having issues getting currencies and like visas and stuff like that to get into it mm-hmm. because the British weren't the biggest fans of the, of the, the Br- British weren't the biggest fans of the SS by this point. Oh uh, yeah, sure. And Himmler also insisted that they all join the SS and be involved in the Unherb, which was an organization that was trying to find evidence for their Nazi racial theories. And that all kind of caused a lot of problems. Mm. The Unherb was known for interpreting or fabricating evidence to basically make their claims. So like, the, the, so like this expedition didn't actually do much much and didn't accomplish much at all but became so mired in like the sort of mythology around the nazi regime because like they were like they were looking for shambhala they like were trying to find enlightenment they were trying to find the spear of destiny yeah. or the holy grail or whatever thing you want to deal with at the time right trying to find some sort of mystical object like it was warehouse 13 yeah exactly it could it could have some sort of mystical power that could help you out man i'd love a warehouse 13 where like every time they investigate something they just find out that it doesn't exist and that it was just a bunch of thing that esoteric nazis were into and they're like this is a very disappointing warehouse they must have covered nazi stuff on warehouse 13 right i don't think i watched they enough of it to have. Know. i watched all except for the last season i have a problem watching last seasons of shows because i i don't like it, it when a show ends so but i it, but it was such so long ago but they must have covered nazi stuff on warehouse 13 probably i'm gonna look this up i'm gonna look this up <laughs> Uh, so like, these are the kinds of things that like built a reputation. So the Nazis did though, one thing during the war that Nazis do all the time, which is lose. Nazis got, got spanked real, real bad. Big, big communist boys from Russia came and spanked them until they cried. And, uh, the war eventually ended. Hey, I have a quick, uh, immediate real time follow up about warehouse 13's Nazi episode, Nazi stuff. There's at least one, and it's pretty pretty spot on for what we're talking about oh, here. Yeah? What was it about? It is Adolf Hitler's microphone. Oh. So you see the microphone. Uh, if anyone doesn't know what Warehouse 13 is, it's basically just a sci- it's an old sci-fi channel show where they would hunt it down. It's like, kind of like X-Files, but a little bit funny. Yeah, they would hunt down artifacts from the past, and they had like w- weird abilities and things like that. So this, H- Adolf Hitler's microphone, any orders or statements spoken into the microphone are broadcast over a large space and have a large amount of influence over those who hear it. So it's like, it wasn't actually anybody's fault. And again, like this would never happen again because they didn't have Adolf Hitler's microphone that gave people, that gave some people the mystical ability to command people to do uh, weird stuff. Disturbingly, the darker and more hostile the speech, the more influential it will be. Man. It's almost, it feels like it's almost, this is like trying way too hard to do exactly what I was talking about. Yeah. 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 So when, when the Nazis lost, um, being mm-hmm. big losers who lose things, uh, all the time, cause they're losers. They lost the Adolf Hitler's microphone. So they couldn't, you know, Yeah, they couldn't keep doing it anymore. Yeah. You start seeing, uh, like the people who need to stick on to being Nazis are also losers in their own right, because you know, you don't get, if you're going to latch onto this, like, you know, loser ideology while also, uh, you know, trying to. To, like it, it, it attracted weirdos is what I'm saying because if you want if you're like still gonna stick around with Nazis showing like the horrors that they did you need to be a little bit off kilter and so mm-hmm. Nazi ideology started to attract a sort of weird subculture that 
got into a bunch of other sort of weird stuff as well and merged it all together. And so while like occultism during the Nazi regime was uh, really overblown, there are a lot Mm -hmm. of people who after the war got into Nazism, but then also were like really into the occult. And like that is sort of Mm. the place where we get a lot of like what is like the rise of esoteric Nazism. Mm. So the idea of the term esoteric is the idea that things are supposed to be only understood by a small amount of people who have specialized knowledge or interest. Like that's the thing. That's the definition of esoteric. Fair enough. We've you have specifically mentioned esoteric Nazis for I think the past couple of episodes in vague terms. So I'm glad we're finally sort of breaking it down of like what that means. Because in my head, I just thought you meant like weird shit. It which is I weird guess is kind of yeah, which I guess is kind of kind of accurate. But to know that there's like a, a and like an actual sort of like not necessarily definition, but sort of like umbrella that it falls under. Uh, yeah, is helpful for me at least. Yeah, esoteric Nazism is like an enti- a Nazi ideology that is kind of designed or at least is is not meant for public consumption or recruitment but is like a mm-hmm. sort of like small and like in-depth lore that that builds so much that people outside are unlikely to uh understand it even sure and sometimes it's also called esoteric hitlerism because of the guy from last week so this em- emerged after world war ii with a mixes of because they couldn't talk about these people in terms of like actual history because actual history showed that they were very ineffective people who lost and all the only thing they did accomplish was some of the world's worst horrors that Mm. we're still uh, wrapping with today but instead tried to like move to like mystical interpretations of Mm. nazism which meant incorporating it with like a spiritual angle and a uh yes we we have talked about this before for a lot on we've like sort of danced around it it's so funny to me how much of like this series about aliens in the third reich is stuff that we've danced around for the past two years like so we've talked about new age stuff and mysticism and stuff like that and how it sort of comes in some ways from like post-world war ii nazism i guess is that fair to say like yeah. the new agey stuff come i would say can, that i would say that it has come from this this is the pr- sort of complicated part is because like that would then like it's very easy to interpret that as like saying that like your crunchy friend who uh buys crystals ha- is, yeah. is a nazi when it's like what happens is that these people right. will like nazis will develop like have these ideas and then they will sell them like one step yeah. removed with like the branding taken off and then other people will pick up and run with it as soon as the sort of nazi labels taken off But what happens is that on a long enough scale, you become like sort of more inoculated to their ideas. And sometimes Mm -hmm. you find yourself advocating for things that they want to happen without even knowing that that's the thing you're advocating. Right. It's so, yeah, just to like double down on what you had said, that it's fully not to say that anyone who you know, believes in like the healing power of crystals or or what have you is literally a Nazi. That's not at all what it is. I am a big fan of ASMR. I feel like I've been pretty open about that. It feels like a weird thing to like be like, I'm I'm out of the closet about ASMR. I like it. But I do sometimes fall asleep to people doing like crystal healing stuff, not because I believe in it at all. In fact, most of the comments are from people being like, this is bogus, but boy, does it trigger my ASMR. That's how I feel about it. And I don't and I'm not saying that those old ladies who do the crystal healings are like Nazis. Uh, I think I think they're just old ladies who make me fall asleep, which is nice. So thank you for them. Thank you to them. There is that. So that's not what I'm what I'm saying. Uh, So right. But but what will happen is and this happens in various different things like Nazi ideas will then get sanitized a little bit and then spread on to other places, which because it all comes from like the sort of same line of thinking, right? If not combated, will on a long enough time scale make people more susceptible to that idea. Like if you buy into the sort of Mm -hmm. mystical version of Nazi ideology, if you buy into some some aspects of it, it's less cognitive work for you to buy into more of it over time. And a lot of this esoteric stuff, like the idea of like getting into things that then like alienate you from mainstream society is to make you distance from mainstream accepted ideas of how things work, which yeah. then makes you more isolated and isolated people are also more prone to getting sucked into alternative 
movements that can then cause radicalization and such like that is like also part yeah. of it and that's why like you're seeing like new age guru type people on like instagram falling for like QAnon stuff because like once yeah. you have made that disconnection from reality it doesn't take that it takes fewer fewer rounds of of disconnection to get you towards something truly insane right I am excited. I would love to learn more about the the sort of specifics of esoteric Nazism and some more ways that it's been on the rise. And I would love to do that without ever experiencing a break. Is that possible? Can we do this without any kind of break, Tristan? Yeah, we could probably take one break for product and service, but oh. then we can go unbreaked after that. But Okay, so unbreaked after that part. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's fine with me. Let's do it. Oh, we did it. All right, but no more breaks, Tristan. No more. Okay. Tell me about this. So esoteric Nazism got really popular and uh, started to basically include taking occult practices okay. and start implementing them into neo-Nazi groups, which is just a term for Nazis after World War II, uh, white nationalist right. groups. They're newer, they're fresher. Mm -hmm. Gen Z Nazis, yeah. And a lot of these ideas were like, taking what are called like taking mystical ideas and implying it to them. Mystical being a sort of a way of understanding that assuades knowledge and, and logic and more embraces experience and feeling. Mm -hmm. So, which is also uh, a core part of fascist ideology is mm -hmm. actually an active rejection of rationality and an embrace of things like will and will to power and emotion. Mm -hmm. So like this, this worked really, really well, which meant that things that had mystical natures often were appealing to people who had fascist just politics because they were basically like anti-intellectual. See, now that's really interesting. That's really interesting you said that because I was always told that facts don't care about your feelings. Yeah. But you're saying maybe to these sorts of people, it's the opposite? That is basically the, the if you wanted like boil down fascism to a single sentence, it would be facts don't care about my feelings or. Oh, yeah. Like facts don't care about my feelings. And honestly, I don't, I'm not a fan of that. They should care about my feelings. My feelings yeah. should dictate the facts, honestly. Yeah. Because there's kind of like it's sort of like the idea behind like this is why there's a lot of Nazism in like the flat earth movement and and mm. such because it's about like through sheer will and determination being able to will reality yeah. into the form that you want it to be manifesting if you will manifesting um, it's almost as if manifesting comes from a movement that has connections with this ideology that's wild so again if you see anyone on TikTok manifesting it definitely means they're 100% a Nazi yeah that's what we're saying and there's no gray area at all yeah um, Okay. Do I have to walk that back? No, no, like no, no. You, you felt uncomfortable with that. It's just that we're on the internet and the internet hates. I was being sarcastic. Yeah, sarcasm. Please don't clip that. Please sarcasm don't clip detector. That. Um, so, but yeah, like things like Hyperborea and other like, you know, mythological things would just get accepted because again, it's about actively rejecting rationality in form of feelings and vibes. So even mm -hmm. getting into things like Kabbalah, which is actually from Jewish mysticism would, would get incorporated into it, which is um, ironic as shit. Yeah. Then you would find like, uh, some bigger, like some, some players in the space, like Sav uh, Savitri Devi, who's a French born Greek writer who became a advocate for esoteric Nazism and, uh, many like, you know, neo-Nazi and white nationalist movements really took, uh, inspiration from his writings that kind of implemented mm -hmm. these ideas. So if you do know, like if you ever, uh, and I don't recommend it, if you ever find yourself talking to Nazis, Ooh, yeah, no, you'll find Nothing that yet. their spaces are full of like things like new agey stuff, but also like conspiracy theories and the kind of things sure. that this kind of um, thinking to try and simplify a very complicated world into simple narratives does. And, uh, and uh, Devi was one of those influential people. They also like built a legitimate subculture, including the fact that there's entire, I hate that it exists, but it's called, um, it's called hate core. And it is a entire oh subgenre of white supremacist Nazi music with bands like rock against communism. Ooh. So these are actually entire neo-Nazi music genres, rock against communism oh, these are not bands. These are genres yeah. and national socialist black metal, which, um, I believe I was on a podcast where I talked about this, but, um, like there's an entire genre of music called dungeon synth. 
that I adore. Okay. It's my favorite like ambient workout or ambient um, working music. I'm going to have to write this down. But the thing is, like the genre began by a guy named Varg Vilkernis, who is, he's an actual Nazi. No. Varg. And a black metal artist who started Dungeon Synth because uh, a synthesizer, like a 1990 synthesizer, was basically the only thing that he could get while he was in prison for murder and burning down oh churches God. and stuff. Yeah. Unfortunately, it kind of slaps. So I hate it. I hate, I hate it. I hate it so hmm. much. There's also a link between esoteric Nazism and neo-paganism. It's like, so you in like the sort of late 20th century, again, hashtag not all neo-pagans. Neo-paganism also has its own sort of intellectual history. But I think I've mentioned right. this before on this show, but there is a, uh, there is connective tissue between uh, Nazism and this sort of attempt to rediscover a pre-Christian past, mostly because mm -hmm. to these specific Nazis, their concept is that Christianity is too Jewish. Right. Yeah, we've talked about that and in, in their way to like sort of in the same way that himmler was looking for these ancient germanic myths they're looking for like pre-christian germanic myths which also plays into this idea that comes from uh nietzschean ideology which mm. was this idea that uh he considered christianity to be what was called a a slave a slave mentality and mm -hmm. that like in the past the you know the the, the past people had, had did not have a slave mentality and that part of like breaking out of that is like embracing ancient pre-christian roots right and that's how you end up with people like the the QAnon shaman and stuff like that oof yeah yeah uh, another thing that was really popular was the interest of a thing called theosophy and volkism uh so theosophy is one again probably a topic for its own episode of the show but it's a religion that began the u.s in the 19th century mm -hmm. primarily started by a russian by the name of helena blavatsky who got into like the aryan race but also like had like a bunch of pseudo history and pseudo archaeology in her writing mm -hmm. basically i think we talked about this before that her writing was basically this idea that she met with a bunch of quote asian you know special spiritual gurus and came back with that information and gave it to people mm -hmm. that's her that was her she was, she was that vague but it like a lot of like ideas about atlantis and like weird stuff all kind of got incorporated into her um into her religious views gotcha and uh, a lot of it in implemented a lot of occultism and western esotericism into mm -hmm. her work but also yeah. it, it added a bunch of stuff about european philosophies like neoplatonism or hinduism and buddhism into like this sort of weird mishmash mix again taking a bunch of uh stuff from other cultures that are not your own and removing them from context and mishmashing them together into whatever you want mm -hmm. is an idea that shows up quite often in fascist ideology because again rationality and you know like like context not important to them and again right gets reproduced in like things like the new age movement which is basically doing the exact same thing kit bashing a bunch of half understood eastern religious mm -hmm. stuff together into whatever they kind of vibe out oh yeah uh, the other one would be volkism which is this uh sort of ethno-nationalist movement uh that started in the 19th mm -hmm. century and ended in the sort of nazi era that was about blood and soil again this is it's kind of the thing I talked about with the ideological roots of the Nazis, like this idea that yeah. the body politic, like the, the nation is the body of the people. Mm -hmm. And so that's like the whole part about like doing f eugenics and stuff like that is part of like making the body healthy again and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah. I, just, I always get such a, a, I know this is the right reaction to have, and I'm not like saying this to, to be like, look how, look how good I am and how much it affects me. I, I get so grossed out talking about eugenics just yeah it's, it's i mean rightfully so but it is just not fun no uh to even think about that that is like a real thing that people believed and still do believe yeah and like you know two different extents we're still practicing today like like canada yeah. is still sometimes sterilizing indigenous people and the government mm is not doing enough to stop that practice. And there's a lot of people who have like been against their will, like sterilized because they thought it would be better for society or whatever. It's a terrible concept and has led Truly to awful. some of the worst things that have ever happened. Ugh. Yeah. And then, of course, also uh, the same sort of thing, the same sort of milieu is that conspiracy theories come out of it because conspiracy, the mm -hmm. concept of 
that the world the way the world's the way it is not because of economics forces not because of like a complex interrelation between different groups that have various different agendas but that it's like all being done by like one group of evil people for some nefarious purpose right is at its core from nazism and so like to me like this is the part where i always really piss off people is like the concept like the sort of mental epistemological loop that you get stuck into the sort of thinking loop that leads to conspiracy theories is falling Mm -hmm. into a sort of anti-semitic conspiracy theory template right so again by buying into them makes you fall even closer to um like like you have to do it, it's again another thing that disconnects you from society disconnects you from mainstream concepts of reality mm-hmm. and pushes you further and further away from others in order to get you more into uh something like fascist ideology because fascism kind of right. or works like a cult in a way because yeah. it, it isolates you and pushes you intellectually into weirder and weirder spaces mm. yes uh, and so ancient astronaut theories and ufo conspiracy theories often draw upon the various narratives that these people write about and that leads to things like thinking that the nazis had extraterrestrial connections or that they inherited alien technology or that aryans have their origins in space yeah because science fiction is part of the various different forms of things that they will glom onto and incorporate into their uh concept because it doesn't have to be consistent it doesn't have to make sense it doesn't have to be logical it's all based Mm -hmm. on feelings and vibes and sometimes drugs uh, in the case of like, you know, the kind of beliefs that a, a Gramcock might say. Right. And so these groups still continue to c- exist. Esoteric and neo-Nazi groups are really into things like ancient astronaut theory and UFO stuff. Mm-hmm. It shows that like Tucker Carlson had a popular UFO thing. We we were in, we that Jose Jose uh, interviewed us about that at a certain point. Right. But also like it's known that like ancient aliens is really popular with conservatives. Yeah. <laughs> and this is sort of the the thing that comes why because I think I'm just like thrown out all of my like really spicy things like this is the time to do yeah. it Tristan. This is episode one one seven. We're finishing the fight yeah conservative ideology is at its core also not based on rationality it's based on feelings and vibes and and so you know Mm -hmm. when you kind of get away from rationality and your understanding of the world you move further and further to in this direction i don't want to derail us a little bit but you did mention tucker carlson did you see his whole thing about like he went to like a supermarket in russia and was just like in awe of like like he was trying to be like this is how it is in russia and it's not like this at all like he was like in love with it and it's like this is not how it is at all in america and everyone including myself was like that is literally like he you put a quarter to get a cart and then you have incentive to return it so you can get your quarter back i'm like that's aldi aldi does that we have that i have a loony on my desk that i use for when we go to canadian aldi which is no frills because they do the exact Mm -hmm. same thing yeah yeah and he's like and they have like a bakery here and i'm like every like walmart has a bakery what are you talking about like the the, this is a man who has not shopped for himself not gotten groceries for himself in ages well he's probably born rich so yeah he's probably oh yeah well there you go shopping ever and so he's like experiencing all this and be like wow it's so much better than 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 america and it's like it's literally the same tucker carlson version of what does a banana cost ten dollars yeah yeah how much could it cost ten (laughs) dollars yeah and man if bananas cost ten dollars i'd be bankrupt uh my toddler goes through so many bananas oh my goodness i can only imagine yeah i used i go through them for smoothies but this is not banana talk no bananas are good things these are this is bad things time yeah uh, so this is the part where tristan makes you sad now <laughs> oh we have formally moved into that yeah this is exciting i have two options for sad music stingers and maybe you don't like either of them and maybe i have to keep searching but option here one is here's option one this is the part where tristan makes you sad Ooh. So pretty ominous. Yeah. That is like maybe a little too sad. I don't know. But here's the other one. This is the part where Tristan makes you sad. Mm. So it's a mo- little more contemplative, that one. The other one is sadder. This one's more contemplative. What do you think? I think that the audience should weigh in. The audience should weigh in. All right, go back. Listen to those two. If I could play them at the same time and make it really terrible to listen to, I would. Uh, But I won't do that to you. I kind of like the first one. That's just me. It is very much the sad part. 
but it's good to have options. Maybe the part where Tristan makes you sad isn't depressing, but it's just sort of like, think about that. And maybe we'll have that as an option. Maybe we'll just keep them both. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But all right. So, yeah. So all of that stuff, like the kind of thing I'm talking about, how these, how these ideas hijack people's brains and how they're used to push you further and further away from society and towards the far right is the part where it kind of like that kind of makes the the point for you that like saying that the extra, that extraterrestrials were the result of the origins of the Aryan people suggests First of all, it gives credit to the idea of a hierarchy of races because then it's like, oh, Aryans are from space, huh? And they're really awesome and they're all cool. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting take there, bud. Mm-hmm. And in a way, it's just recycling and reinforcing white supremacist ideology is just using sort of a little bit of a science fiction veneer to to separate it just enough so that it's not you saying white people are better at saying that alien, like white people are, or Aryans specifically are descended from aliens and those aliens are pretty cool and pretty sophisticated and really interesting. Right. And their wieners mm-hmm. are huge. They got big wieners. Their wieners look like naked mole rats. <laughs> well, maybe naked mole rats don't look like wieners. Maybe wieners look like naked mole rats. There you go. Which one came first? We don't know. Oh boy. Don't, don't answer that internet. Don't answer that. Scientists remain divided. Oh God. And so, yeah. And this kind of stuff leads to a sort of mystical veneer for their ideology, which makes them seem like they're more profound, but also more historically rooted. Because then if you can say that, like, these people have their origins in, like, you know, stuff that's been going on for thousands of years and stuff, then they're like that you're 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 legitimizing their their completely non-scientific take about how humans work Uh by doing this, by do by like repeating racist ideas like that, there's like superior or like a hierarchy of species just by like sawing off the numbers, you're normal normalizing people to the ideas without um, right. the sort of negative connotation. And unfortunately that is sort of like a big thing that we need to talk about in the way that like media literacy works, because it's not a thing we covers very much, but the idea is that there are a lot of ideas out there that we consider either really good or really evil. And if we removed the, the name of it, from what it was right. called and just described it as it was, we would have a completely different idea of what it is. Branding. It's all about branding. Exactly. And the far right have been very successful over the years by taking anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, sawing off the uh, the branding of like, you know, neo-Nazism, anti-Semitism, white supremacy, and just using the same arguments just with that like one level of abstraction. And all of a sudden they become really popular. Um, this is where I like things like dog yes. whistles are really important and like like uh, a lot of like yeah i i talked about this actually a couple of years ago in a video of mine about thor the dark world if you can believe that where i talked about how the people on the right are very good unfortunately at branding their arguments as like the obvious like if you just hear the name of it it feels r- like you t- take abortion for example their stance is pro life so like that feels good, right? Yeah. That feels like a like the the correct thing. Again, don't clip that. I'm not. I'm pro choice. Please don't. <laughs> please don't clip that. But but that's that's what they're good. It's it really should be anti-abortion, anti-bodily autonomy is what it should be. But they were so good at branding mm-hmm. it, it that way, and, and and a lot of that sort of continues. You know, it's it's like everyone being like free speech. I should say as many slurs as I want. Yeah. Like I've seen this process happen. Like this process has happen in American history multiple times. Like, for example, the the big one that comes to my mind is that in the 1970s and 80s, there was this like unholy alliance built between neo-Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan, who in the past Mm. did not like each other because the KKK had a lot of World War II veterans in its membership, but they made a sort Mm. of alliance in the 1970s and 80s. And that's kind of collectively became what was called the white power movement. Mm. And one of their big like anti-Semitic terms they used was called Zog, which stood for Zionist occupational government. And then when they had a huge like reckoning in the late eighties and everything sort of collapsed, the, the idea became like, you know, synonymous with like hate and, and bigotry and everything like that. Take the exact same things that they say that the Jews are doing and rebrand him instead of saying Jews say globalists. 
And then instead of Zionist ah. occupational government, you say new world order. And mm. all of a sudden it's extremely appealing. And then you have people like, for example, Timothy McVeigh, who bought into these ideas and was like, you know, literally did terrorism on behalf of like white supremacist uh, anti-Semitic ideologies without even knowing that that was what it was, or at least allegedly didn't know what it was because he also mm. had read the Turner Diaries, which is like one of the most openly racist books in history mm. that um, yeah. that a lot of people in this like totally not racist militia movement uh, were into. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other thing, but it just shows that like, this is the kind of thing that happens. And when, you know, right. neo-Nazism or white supremacy gets rebranded as let's say white nationalism, or if that doesn't work, right. the alt-right, or if that doesn't work, mm -hmm. traditional conservative or whatever other new term they're going to think of the next time when the, those terms get, don't get muddy because. So Tristan, I'm a classical liberal when you think about it. <laughs> Oh boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's like sort of the, the, the whole thing. And that's why like, it's really important to think about things and, and make sure that the positions you have are grounded in reality and not feelings and vibes because yeah. this is the kind of stuff that leads you down these dark paths. Like the more that you separate yourself from the sort of understanding of reality based on you know, logic and reason and science is right. the closer you get to uh, moving into these directions and that the far right are mm -hmm. very adept at knowing that their brand is toxic. And so they have to do it in like little bits at a time and mm -hmm. and they've done it success I, we've seen multiple successful attempts of it in the last like decade with the alt-right with QAnon, right and, and we're probably going to see more of it because um you're like nine months from a freaking horror show in your country that's probably going to lead to a bunch of that weird shit true. happening over the next uh, few months so that is true that's not fun i feel like we just got over one and we have to do it all over again mm -hmm. If you want to listen to this show all over again, though, uh, or a whole different episode, if you know what, we've done a lot of these episodes and we're covering Nazis right now and we're still going to continue, right? Yeah. Doing yeah. Nazis. We've still got a bunch. We got a bunch of fun stuff to ch chew on. So don't worry. We're in our Nazi anime arc. Oh, God. And this is this is what we have to go through. But we have a lot more episodes if you want to catch up and, and you know, uh, listen to non-Nazi related things, except for surprise, almost all of them are related to Nazis in some way. Uh, shape or form but if you just want to follow us anyway i don't i couldn't think of a good reason for people to follow us but if you wanted to follow us anyway you can go uh, follow us at probs not aliens on twitter and blue sky like we said before blue sky is totally free for everyone to join now we're over there it's a fun time tristan other than that where can people find you on the internet oh boy uh the best place that you can find my work is at stepbackhistory.com which goes to my youtube channel where yeah. I make stuff about why it's important for understanding history to get the world is today. This is a pretty good example of that kind of thing, actually, like right at this moment. Of course, this, this exact this exact uh, episode kind of explains the kind of thing that I'm kind of getting into or, or the kind of stuff you'll see on Step Back. And I'm literally making a video on this topic while talking about it in a different context that should be out by the time this comes out. And if not, bad things have happened to us. <laughs> Scott, if I wanted to learn the tragic story about how CP C3PO got a red arm, uh, where would I go for that? That is an old episode back when The Force Awakens came out. I was the first person to cover it. It's one of my more popular videos. Look at me doing Star Wars. Star Wars is like space, but it's not scary. So it's not really your thing, Tristan. That is all on my YouTube channel, NerdSync. N-E-R-D-S-Y-N-C. That is how you spell it. It's all one word. And uh, I make videos about comics. And so that was about a comic, by the way. Comics and uh, superheroes and cartoons. I'm working on a video right now about the Harlem Globetrotters. And I keep discovering many, many weirder things. I feel like I've done an H-Bomber guy where I started being like, why did the Harlem Globetrotters appear so much in Scooby-Doo? And I was like, cool, let me cover that. And then like, you know, 15 minutes into the video, I'm like, anyway, so that's the explanation. And uh, everything else you know about the Globetrotters and their entire history is a lie. And let me explain why. So it's, it's I've un, I'm unraveling a weird thing in, in throughout history. I've become an accidental journalist against my will. But that's where you can find my stuff. And 
Thank you to everyone who supports us on Nebula. You can get these episodes early at nebula.tv slash probably not aliens. It helps support the show. We don't really make any money from the show. We have an ad for Nebula, but that is it. If you support us over there, it helps us out. And you can also, if you don't have money, we get it. You can leave us reviews for free on Apple Podcasts and feedback on Spotify. That stuff really helps too. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't want to do any of that, just tell your friends about the show. It's great. Go up to people and say, do you like learning about Nazis? And they'll say, who are you? (laughs) Why are you sure? I'm just trying to order a meal at Cracker Barrel, but you're shouting to me about Nazis. They'll appreciate it in the long run. And just tell us, tell them about our show. And a great place to send them is Mm probsnotaliens.com. That has links to everything, everywhere where you can listen to the show. All the things. It's got, it has links to literally everything that's available. The entire internet. We have linked, we have found every single webpage on the internet and we decided to link them all. Do not hit control P. It will take up all of the paper of the world. Don't do it. Yeah. But that is it. So thank you for joining. Until next time, my name is Scott Nicewander. I'm Tristan Johnson and the truth is out there. Mm, probably. I didn't know it. I was trying to go mystical, but yeah, I need like a gong sound effect. Gong, gong, gong sound. sound.